And welcome back to the Power Cave Podcast Game Day Preview. And Parramatta are taking on the Melbourne Storm at Marvel Stadium Friday night. So this will come out on the morning of the game as it is a game day preview. And I've managed to get a massive Melbourne Storm fan on the line uh, or in the video as well. Smokey from Melbourne. How you going, mate? Thank you very much for joining me. Not a problem, mate. G'day, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Now, uh, just before we get into a bit of a game day preview, how long have you supported the Melbourne Storm for and how did you end up supporting the Melbourne Storm? Quite a number of years. It stemmed from origin, actually, for me, so I came into it that way, um, the reverse way to most Victorians, the way they come into league. Yep. Uh, with half the team virtually playing for Queensland at the time of the eight in a row, um, it was an easy sort of transition. It was actually after, actually it was 2015, where my mate went, um, well, I know you went to Origin the other night, but uh, I've got some tickets for the Storm game and I'm right in the Thunder squad. Uh, I can't go. Do you want to take them? And it was love at first sight and it stayed on from there, even though we lost to the Broncos that game. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, that vividly. Yeah, that, fantastic. So 20, what was that, 2015? 2015, yeah. 2015, yeah. So uh, that's when you started supporting the Melbourne Storm. So in that time, who have been some of your favourite players from 2015? Obviously the gentleman behind you there. big. Yes, definitely the final years of Billy. And uh, my missus is actually from Papua New Guinea, so Justin's a big one in our house. Um, In fact, it might have made media with you guys. I don't know up there. But um, when uh, they did the, the fan on Fox League, they did a story on Justin. They showed okay. a tiny little, um, well, they showed a tiny shot of a, the, the village back at home watching a very small TV. And I just thought, well, Storm, you know, all fans of all clubs always talk about giving back to their, their team that they love and they don't really know how to do that all the time. So I actually came up with a GoFundMe and we funded to get a, a nice big TV for Justin's village. Oh, nice. So that happened, uh, was about, that happened the finals a couple of years ago. Um, okay. I can't remember exactly when now. It was, yeah. Sorry, I got a bit off there. but <laughs> Yeah, no, that's okay. That, that, that's a great idea. That's that's uh, fantastic. Uh, they would have really appreciated that. Appreciated that for sure. And obviously, going to be. You had big... your critics. I mean, people said, well, Justin can afford to buy a TV for his village back home. But true, it but... wasn't about that. It was yeah, about yeah. fans coming together to do something for one of the players we absolutely love. And yeah. if we could think of other things to do for other um players in the team, then I'm sure we would as well. Now, just on a little bit of a side note, um, we know that Pat Munich, the national sport is rugby league, and there has been a little bit of talk about an 18th franchise from PNG. What what are your thoughts on that? I don't know if it would uh, detract from what we've already got going good here, or if somewhere more like WA is really deserving of it because let's face it, every time something goes over to Perth and plays in that massively good stadium they've got over there, they sell it out. Yeah. So they're they're very much supporting of it. And I'm sure grassroots over there is quite strong as well. I mean, I know it's still AFL territory effectively, but I'm pretty sure there'd be a fair uh, contingent of grassroots over there that would just be itching for a club. Yeah, no, probably a good thought there. Um, I've always thought, yeah, WA would be a good good fit, be good for the broadcasters anyway, their time difference. And, um, yeah, that they certainly would be in line for another one uh, or another crack at being in, in the NRL. Um, have you – you started in 2015 supporting the Melbourne Storm. Have you gone back and traced the history of the Melbourne Storm? And- oh, of course. Of course, gone yeah. right through it. Um, and become a very big part of it since. Um, from basically the Sharks uh, grand final we played in 2016, uh, it took me that sort of little amount of time to meet some diehard Storm fans who are actually the active support being the Storm Active Supporters Group or SAS. Yep. yep. 
And um, the next season, I virtually start, started sitting with them because I didn't really have a home of who I was sitting with at the time. I was chopping and changing around the stadium and seeing what felt good for me at Amy Park. Finally found a home with these guys, met them on that um, that afternoon of that grand final. Okay, the result didn't go too well for us. Um, but from that, oh, I got a whole new family in the Storm Active Supporters Group. And now I'm one of the admin of that group as well. We have a lot of liaison with the club uh, directly. We're the ones with the massive flags, the drums, and get the chants going up in the Slater stand. And, okay. uh, yeah. yeah, it's just gone from strength to strength. You're not the ones with the cowbells as well, are you? Uh, no, we don't actually have a cowbell. That's basically Storm Man and just the okay. electronic recorded one. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I hate that sound, but... Uh, <laughs> um, and it's here like, it is now. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like the Panthers when they play their uh, Panther sound. There. It's, it's crazy. It's annoying. But anyway, um, yes. what have been some of your favourite Parramatta verse? Melbourne memories because no doubt oh. you, you guys have uh, pretty much had the well r- sorry recently we've had the sort of wood over you guys but you had you had the moz on us yeah but previous to that you guys um uh, uh you beat us in 2020 uh, prelim yeah uh yep and i was about final. to say that's probably my favorite we, moment which uh, one 2020 prelim. So with all of us locked down back here in Victoria and our team having to relocate to the Sunshine Coast, uh, a mate of mine in the SAS, Damien Fraser, um, we put together a video, uh, sort of bit of a G up for the boys uh, and virtually not even just the boys, the whole travelling support staff from the coaches, all their families that went up with them, it was just our way of saying thank you for going up there, keeping the uh, keeping the game going for us. Same as the Warriors. Cannot yeah, thank the Warriors yeah. enough for what they did during 2020 um, to stay in the country and keep the, the whole thing going for us. But, um, yeah, we put that video together with Storm fans as well. We've asked for expressions of um, photos that they had and put together, I think it was about a five-minute video. What we believe from what we've been told is that video was played about uh, two hours or so before we absolutely demolished you guys at Suncorp. So, well. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Not uh, not good memories for myself and other para fans, obviously, but uh, it's not the first time that you've demolished us at uh, Suncorp either. That's true, yeah. But <laughs> um, ma- we've definitely had the moz on us lately, and we're hoping that turns around tomorrow. But uh, who knows? I mean, look at the Knights game. What? <laughs> we, yeah, we think I... we'll go to Newcastle, we'll enjoy some fish and chips on the beach, we'll roll in, we'll roll them, and then we'll roll home. <laughs> no, they rolled us. <laughs> How's uh, Christian Welsh feeling at the moment about those comments a few weeks ago? Oh, I don't even know. I mean, this this year for us has been so up and down. Like we've yeah. we've pants games that we weren't expecting to win, but then we've also lost games that we were absolutely expecting to win. But a lot of teams this season seem to be the same. I mean, yeah. who saw that West Tigers upset with Panthers in <laughs> Bathurst? Yeah, which so I enjoyed. I- Every single second of, and actually is one of the only games that my team hasn't played in that I've gone back and watched the full thing again. Yeah. And also, and I'll say this now to everyone who listens to this on any coach or any team, that is the game of the season, hands down. Okay. Okay, yeah. Nah, it's always good to see Penrith get beat and... Um... To be honest, it's always good to see Melbourne get beat, but I did tip Melbourne last week. But well, let's get into tomorrow night's game, uh, Friday's game, Parramatta and Melbourne at Marvel yep. Stadium. And um, the last time Parramatta played Melbourne at Marvel Stadium was 2007 in a prelim final as well. Uh, you guys got us that night as well, 26 to 10, I think it was. Um so hoping to change those tomorrow night. 
Now, looking at uh, the Parramatta squad, what are your thoughts on the Parramatta squad? Well, first of all, that was probably five stadium name changes ago. Yeah, so I think it was, <laughs> uh, it might have been Colonial Stadium in 2007, but yeah, you're right, because yeah. <laughs> what Eddie had Colonial, now Marvel. Telstra Dome. Telstra Dome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I kind of hope few. we stick with Marvel. It's it's kind of a cool thing to have a Marvel association in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Um, yeah, especially with all the Marvel characters that are out these days, and uh, just to have that association would be pretty good. Um, have you been down and seen the stadium since it's been named Marvel, and all the like the little bits that they've put in from some of the movie props as well around the stadium? No, I haven't. The last time I was there was probably two thousand and three, uh, and it wasn't for a rugby league game; it was for an AFL game. So ah. uh, I was down for the weekend for the Grand Prix, so we ah. went to an AFL game there. So. Um, I haven't seen a rugby league game there, and it's been well twenty years since I've been there. Well, you're not missing much watching <laughs> one there. Um, even where we're sitting tomorrow night, which is behind the goals in section one, uh, <laughs> we're a good forty meters away from even the dead ball line, so it's it's not great viewing. But we're living with it for the fact that we're still getting a home game, but uh, can't. Can't really take it away from the Women's World Cup. I mean, it's a huge spectacle down here in Melbourne at the moment, as I'm sure it has been in Sydney as well and Brisbane and um, everywhere else it's being played. Yeah. 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 Give us our damn stadium back. (laughs) (laughs) What what are your thoughts about playing on a a round field? Is it uh, not right or should it be on a rectangle field? And how do you think Like this will be the second time that you guys have played there? Uh, yep. this year. Yep, um, it is. We played Panthers a couple of weeks, oh, about a month ago. Yeah, yeah. and I Same time think, slot as well. Yeah, and I don't think Parramatta's played on a round field this year yet. Uh, this will be our first time. Uh, a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks' time, we play the Broncos at the Gabba, another round field. Um, so and that's even further away than bloody um, Marble was. I saw that uh, the first game, the first weekend of the Women's World Cup, and they had to play there, and it was like, is anyone there seeing anything? Yeah, it's um, yeah. I've never been a fan of rugby league or or yeah, rugby league on round fields. You're just too far away. Um, oh, for the fact we have to keep coming up to Sydney and play your or play our grand final in your state oh. at a round ground, no uh, bloody ovals. Oh. <laughs> Mate, the grand final is going to be in New South Wales in, at a cool stadium for years to come. Don't worry about that. It's the home of rugby league. Don't worry yes. about that. <laughs> oh, well, you know, if you if uh, if you if you take our grand final, we'll take your AFL grand final. See how that works. I wouldn't care. It'd be a lot <laughs> quieter in my job for the day. I, I wouldn't <laughs> care either, to be honest. But uh, Nah, the rugby league grand final staying in Sydney, that's for sure, I reckon, anyway. Yeah, well, look, it, so it should. But we've we've got ours, and they've, we've, they've talked about chopping and changing it all over the country and whatnot, and okay, yeah, COVID was a bit of a laugh, and we had to send it up north, and, you know, but nah, it belongs where it belongs. Both of them belong where they belong. Yeah, 100%, 100%. What are your thoughts on the Parramatta side that's going to take the field tomorrow night? Who do you think are the um, danger players who Melbourne need to look out for? The way we're playing at the moment, everyone. <laughs> Including the ball return kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, oh, uh, probably Queen – oh, sorry, King Guffo. Um, that would have to be one um, for sure. I actually, you know what, I'm going to be honest, I haven't actually seen who's playing. I've been very busy today. Yeah. I wanted to check the team's list, so uh, give me a rundown of who's in there and if you wouldn't uh, mind. Yeah, so obviously uh, you haven't seen the Melbourne side either? I have I saw a very bit of an upset list in the Melbourne side, um, as we were talking about before. Good mate J.O. here, not playing. No, no, a new centre combination this week. Okay, so we've got uh, to run through the Melbourne side first. We've got Nick Meany, a fullback, Will Warbrick at wings uh, with Xavier Coates, 
Marion Seve and Young Tanamapia in the centres, Cameron Munster, Jerome Hughes in the halves, Tui Kamakamitha, Harry Grant, Christian Welsh, Trent Larere. Liero. Yep, sorry. Yep. Uh, no, you're Tom, right. Tom, Tom Eisenhuth, Josh King. So that's his side with Bronson Garlic, Alec McDonald, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Katoa and Tyron Richard as your reserves. Yep. So Parramatta side, Clint Gutherson, Wonga Blake, Will Penasini, Bailey Simonson, Sean Russell, DJ Narsi, Mitchell Moses, Offahiki Ogden, Brennan Hands, Junior Paulo, Andrew Davey, Bryce Cartwright, Jermaine Hopgood, and on the bench, Luca Moretti, Joe Offahangawi, jo- Joey Lussick, and Ryan Madison. So what's your thoughts on those lineups? Pretty square match, I reckon. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because, like, let's face it, like our centre combination, as we just said, is going to be completely different to what it's virtually been the entire season. Is that a so, concern for yourself? No, because what have you guys had to study for it? You don't have anything. So we're just yeah. going to go out and play a game. Yeah, and you're just going to have to keep up. That, 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 that's one way to look at it for sure, obviously, yeah. Um, obviously, Will Penasini and Bailey Simonson are probably, I wouldn't say more experienced players, but probably a stronger centre combination. Mm. I'd uh, agree. I would definitely agree with that. Moses is huge for you guys. Always has been. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Battle of the Halves would be interesting. Um, obviously, Arcee's just coming into his career. Munster is Cameron Munster. Um, and Jerome, he's well, they're, they're probably the Halves combination for Melbourne outplays, well, not outplays, but on paper is better than the Parramatta one. Uh, but you could say that Mitchell Moses may be better than Jerome Hughes. So it's probably about even. Yeah, he's, he, he's an interesting one this year. He's put a bit of magic together, but I would say now it's like what happened to Munster after a few seasons of being in and in the same uh, same spot, trying the same things. People tend to seem to have his number now. He doesn't get away with what he used to. Same as even um, Harry. Um, Grant's tactic of, you know, get it right close to the line and just dive over the line through everybody is now well and truly on notice because you see the way everyone bunches up around him as soon as he's anywhere close to that try line and he's playing dummy half. Yeah, no, definitely he's going to be one to watch from dummy half because he get his style of victory against us in round one this year in Golden Point, scored the, the winning try there and the last time at uh, the time before that was the last round of the last competition, uh, last year's competition, and uh, Parramatta got the victory then, twenty two fourteen, and mm-hmm. propelled us into the top four on that occasion. Um, you deserved Mel- it last year. I mean, apparently it was your year, like it is every <laughs> other year. But <laughs> yeah, I know uh, it's it's, uh... it's got to be a matter of time. It surely. I mean, the the forms come back as much as I don't like to say it about para because there's a personal rivalry I've got with someone who's now deceased um was a mate of mine um it was always the para storm thing but you you guys are definitely getting there and it's got to get to a point where you can finally go well look we can now throw the VHS away from that last one and we can now finally oh, yeah, watch it on the I've, DVD I've got, I've got DVDs in the para cave mate it's all right <laughs> I've probably got the VHSs as well, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I know, I know what you mean. But if you got Betamax, I'm concerned. <laughs> no, <laughs> VHS, no beta. Um, yeah, no. Nah. But yeah, we are getting closer. We've had a strange year this year. A lot of injury suspensions. Uh, the draw. Um, but you still have to play everyone that's in front of you. We've um, all heard the excuses. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of a lot of, a lot <laughs> We've of reasons, all got the excuses. Re- reasons, not excuses. Reasons. Um, so yeah, no, it's certainly been an interesting season, that's for sure. Um, the forward pack, who, who 
who do you think is going to stand out in the forward pack? I mean, obviously, other than Harry Grant, someone to watch out for. But do you think it's a a young, or not a young, but a sort of inexperienced sort of forward pack that you have at the moment? I think it's not so much experience, enthusiastic, yeah. definitely, um, but definitely need some guidance. That's where it's it's lacked a bit. And I don't and, like shit catting my own team, but yeah. it is what it is, and I'm I'm very honest about that. And is the loss of Big Nelson a, a massive factor? Uh, well, considering our our forward uh, combination this year is a bit under strength from what to, it has been in previous years, yeah, definitely. And obviously, yeah. Tarek Sims is suspended as well, so that's a another loss for you. As you should be. Experience loss. Sorry, Tarek, Experience. if you're going to watch this, but as you should be. <laughs> Experience loss. Um, yeah. Uh, what's your, how much longer is Craig Bellamy going to coach for? Because uh, we all thought this year was going to be his last year, but he's going around next year as well. Which we're happy about. But um, I think, if I remember rightly, I can't remember if it was publicly said or if it was something I heard that's not exactly covert or anything or giving away anything, but the I think part of the decision to go around again was the footy was back to raw and it was a challenge again, rather than having all the big talent and everything just going game after game after game. It's, it's gone back to the real basics and I think that's where the enjoyments come in and why he decided to go around again. Even if it's just to get to a caretaker position that he's happy that, you know, he's built it right back up into what we have always seen and expected in Melbourne uh, before he feels like he can step aside. Do you think uh, Craig Bellamy and Brad Arthur would have exchanged phone calls this during this week uh, about this game, seeing as though Brad was an assistant coach to Craig a few years ago now? Well, Craig seems to have a good relationship with anyone, um, any of the coaches. I don't think there's anyone he actually hasn't, I mean, that I'm aware of anyway. Yeah. But you you normally see a bit of banter and whatnot between the coaches. So I possibly probably had a phone call. They're probably organising to catch up while they're up there, yeah. well, while, while, they're, while you guys are down here, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I just lost a train of thought there. I was going to say, what, what sort of a crowd do you think they are expecting there tomorrow night? Given there is an AFL match on, and it's a big one as well at the G uh, this weekend, it's not standalone like it was for the last game against Panthers. Yeah. But another solid side. Um, and as much as we don't like sitting at an oval ground for – a rectangle sport. We were actually quite surprised with the turnout from the previous game. Give it, and we, oh, here's another tip for anyone traveling down um, or is here at least all the roads around Docklands aren't going to be closed this time for a light festival that no one gives a shit about. <laughs> uh, we couldn't get near the place. It, yeah, I, got, okay. I came from work, which is about uh, normally a half an hour drive from that stadium, even yeah. in reasonably bad traffic nearly an hour and a half it took me to get to it because half the roads in docklands were closed yeah well wow. yeah <laughs> well, not fun <laughs> yeah no no okay take so, the tram. i just yeah, won't okay. be driving it okay fair enough thanks for that now i won't be coming down unfortunately this time i've made the track a couple of times but uh, unfortunately, this time I won't be. I know a few people that are going down and a few people that do live there, so I'm, I'm sure uh, they'll take your tips on board and uh, they'll be there anyway as well. Let's do some uh, bold predictions. What are your thoughts on the score? What will the score be tomorrow night? Well, you never like to go against your team, do you? But it's, it's hard at the moment with form and just the new combinations that are coming in. Well, not new, but wildly untested combinations coming in. I'm going to say it'll be a close one, uh, but I'm hoping with the enthusiasm after last week's shock loss, uh, 
will get the edge. So maybe 2018. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's very rare that the Melbourne Storm lose two games in a row. So it, um, that's one of the things that I think that uh, us as Parramatta fans are sort of worried about in terms of that they don't turn, tend to lose two in a row that often. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be about 30 to 14, um, Parramatta's way, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you went the other way, I'd be shocked. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Most people listening to this will be shocked that last week I did tip the Cowboys uh, to beat Parramatta. Hey, safe bet at the moment. How in form are the cows? Yes, yes. They um, certainly play some great footy at the moment and first time in the top eight and jumped us into seventh spot. So, yeah, as you said, they're six in, a, six in a row, I think, now. So I think that's what it is, yeah. And I think yeah, but I'm, I'm liking that side. I'm liking what's happening up there. Yeah. Um, and I've I don't have you been to a Townsville for a game? Uh I went to the old stadium in twenty eighteen, so So with the new yeah. stadium and I'll say that whole town and I mean pretty much that whole town really rallies around that team. The support they've got up there at all levels is it's just amazing. It's something really special to go up there for a game and um uh, see, even if your team does lose it. Yeah, but there's no real bit of fans or anything about it. There's no sort of real show ponies that get in your face like you can get with other teams. But uh, no, it's it's a good, great place to go up and visit. I re- I highly recommend everyone get to a game in North Queensland at some point in their life. Yeah, no, I um, unfortunately the year that I went, uh, we were wooden spooners and we also played North Queensland in JT's last ever home game. So. Oh. <laughs> that was tough uh, game. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that was very tough. Um, and it was a big loss. So um, he would have been kicking him out of the stadium and over the river. <laughs> he would have been uh, up and just, about that man. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, he was on fire that night. Absolutely carved his stuff. Do you have a, a pick as a first try scorer at all? Given who's in the team. And just on form alone, especially coming out of origin, uh, got to give it to Coates. Okay. Crossfield kick. Crossfield kick. Whoa. Yeah, no, Harry, no, no, Harry will a... launch one up for him to run for. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, he's known as a great leaper and can take that high ball and score a great try. Um, I'm going to go Bailey Simonson. Um I think he's had a couple of off weeks the last couple of weeks, but I think uh, he's due for one this week. Uh, any sort of bold predictions about the game at all? Any Anything that you think is going to happen that is sort of out of the ordinary or, or a brave call-out? Oh, it's so hard. Like, I mean, as close as you sort of do get to some of the team and whatnot and – what you can sort of find out through back channels. I'm really not sure. I think I think it's going to be back to basics. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that in order just to secure the two two points? Don't know about securing the two points. I think we just might be just sort of going back to basics just to see how it all gels moving forward because uh, we're getting closer to the pointy end. And at the moment, we're still in that nice slot in the pointy end. Yeah. And I don't think we want to slip any further out of that than what we possibly could have if a couple of games went a different way last weekend. Yeah, no, it's certainly a very tight competition. And you can see um, everyone in that top eight and just outside of the top eight, if they win or they lose, positions go up and down. It's so close. It's, it's yeah, juicy absolutely. how good the eight is at the moment. And then... Yeah. Even just outside of that as well, just oh, there's so many teams that are in the hunt and they're all hungry for it. It's great season. I mean, yeah, we. I mean, we say it as rugby league fans. We say it every year that this is a great year. This is the best year ever. But I think this year, just the closeness of the competition is just it's unreal. It's um, yep. It's it's what we want as fans. 
Well, Smokey, thank you very much for joining me tonight on the Paracay Podcast Game Day Preview. And listeners and viewers, uh, you'll see Smokey at the game tomorrow night, uh, Friday night. No Waving doubt. a big flag. Waving the big flags. Sitting behind the goals at the, uh, uh, what are we, the Southern Cross Station end, I believe. Okay, yeah, there we go. So keep an eye out for him and thank you very much for joining me. And maybe in a few weeks' time, we might organise a extended chat about your support for the uh, Melbourne Storm in, as part of the fan series. And yeah, no if you problem. ever come up to Combank Stadium, give me a shout-out and um, we'll catch up Definitely. with today. Definitely will. But just remember where you guys are coming tomorrow. <laughs> Our home, Victoria. <laughs> nah, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Thank you very much.